With the SDGs, there was an acknowledgement that development finance would have to go from billions of dollars to trillions of dollars. And the way to do that would be to bring in private capital. Enter blended finance. Blended finance. Blended finance. Blended finance. Blended finance is the future of development. So you've probably heard the term blended finance. Blended finance is the use of public and philanthropic capital to catalyze private investment in developing countries around key development priorities. While blended finance is sometimes defined differently, it typically has three key characteristics. The investment has to have a financial return, the investment has to seek to achieve a key SDG or other development challenge, and the money coming from those public or philanthropic donors has to be truly catalytic meaning that the private sector would not have come in without it. One example is the Global Financing Facility, launched in 2015 to support every woman, every child. This is a rather large facility with a large number of partners all working to find creative financing solutions that leverage public, philanthropic, and private investment to address issues around maternal, child, and adolescent health. So while there are these examples, there are also emerging concerns about how these often complex deals are structured and how you could get them to the scale needed to achieve the SDGs, among other issues. To help address some of those concerns, last year, the OECD released a set of guiding principles around blended finance. The non-binding principles said that blended finance should be rooted in a development rationale, should mobilize private capital, should take into account the local context, should look to effective partnering, and should be sure to monitor for the effectiveness and transparency of development outcomes. So while there's excitement around the potential of blended finance, these deals are difficult to structure. And if they're not structured properly, they can run into problems, including distorting markets. There are also concerns about the development impact of blended finance deals and ensuring that there is both a financial and a development additionality. Transparency and measurement requirements are key. It seems like blended finance is here to stay. But for it to grow, a few things need to happen. A 2017 report from Convergence offered a few suggestions. First, donor organizations need to fully understand blended finance. They also need effective metrics for measuring additionality, value for money, and leverage. And multilateral and bilateral development finance institutions need to take on more risk in their investments. Blended finance has the potential to bring in much needed funding for the SDGs, but a lot needs to happen for it to get there. Here at DevX, we'll continue to report on blended finance, so stay tuned for more coverage.